Let's get into Clemson versus Notre Dame. They had to travel to South Bend, Indiana, and man, it was a back and forth battle. Uh, after the first quarter, seven to ten, Notre Dame was up. At halftime, it was twenty-three to thirteen, and um, Clemson was trying to fight to get back in it. Clemson then came and answered with ten unanswered points in the third quarter to make it twenty-three twenty-three, and then. Uh, another 10, they split 10s in the fourth quarter to tie the game up 33-33. They went into overtime. Clemson came out, looked really good. Now, Al, I had already left your house. I had already left your house. So, I, so Alan and I watched the game. Like I said, Houston wasn't there with us, unfortunately. He was invited. He just was too good for us. But I left your house at halftime, had to take little girl home so she'd go to bed. But going into halftime or going into overtime, I mean, I still felt confident. I felt confident with DJ. He looked good. But what I didn't feel confident with was that it was a sh- my, my first thought that popped in my head was, oh, no, shorter field. The mm-hmm. defense can't stop anybody. I just hope DJ can keep scoring because the defense will not be able to stop them with 90 yards to go, and they definitely can't stop them with 25 yards to go. Yeah, I tend to agree with that for the most part. I mean, it was just – and it's not that we don't have faith in the Clemson defense. I, You know, I think we've been propping the defense up all year long. They're just injured. They've got everybody out. Okay, they have some of the best pieces they have and even lost more in that game. I mean, we already had Skowski out. We already I had Davis out. We already had uh, Mike Jones out. Uh, and then we lost – I don't even know if they came back for overtime. We lost Nolan Turner at one point. We lost Landon Zanders at one point. We lost Brian Brzee. We were losing everybody. I mean, goodness gracious, it was crazy. I mean, you just had to outscore them. I honestly wanted us uh, in the second overtime. Well, we didn't ever get there, but I was hoping we would score a touchdown, go for two, and just try to end it immediately. Um, but the fact of the matter is, and I don't I don't know if you wanted to get to this yet, but we should have won that in regulation. Uh, I, I think there was some, some disastrous coaching decisions there at the end of the game. Um, so, Houston, give us your yes. thoughts, because you look like you have something to say. I do. Um, I don't know what in the world – is going through, I don't know if this was Dabo Sweeney's mindset or Tony Elliott's mindset, the game should have been won or at least given Notre Dame the ball back with very minimal time left. If they score and go 90 yards in a minute, it's just not our night. But when you get the ball back with 211 in the game, you go through and get the stop that you need. Clemson got the stop they needed, all right, Uh, and were able only to run off what – I believe only like 17 seconds yeah. off the clock in the last play. They ran out of bounds. Clemson ran out of bounds with Travis Etienne. What in the world? What kind of play calling is that? It's ultra conservative. You know that Notre Dame the entire night is just selling out completely mm-hmm. on the run. They All were night. not going to allow you to run it. So I know this is not conventional thinking, but throw short passes. Just like, well, five yard out, five yard in the middle of the field, get down on the ground and run the clock. Make them use their timeouts. It's stupid. If you drop the ball, I'd probably be complaining about it. But considering that DJ Uyangalele threw for 439 yards and he couldn't miss. I mean, that's that's the thing. DJ has thrown for 700 yards and has scored six touchdowns in his first two games. And honestly, he's put the team on his back for the first two games. You need to put that in his hands, not running the ball or anything like that. Let him throw the ball. um, And it doesn't have to be long. Short passes, get on the ground, run the clock, let them use timeouts. And even before then, all right, you had two separate times when it was tied 23-23, when it was tied 26-26, or um, maybe it was one of the times where we'd gotten the lead. But you had time to just put that game away, put that game on ice, seize momentum, and just take the lead. And I always felt like when we got the stop, especially after the turnover, we got the stop in the end zone. We didn't seek the kill shot. If you'd have gone deep there with DJ and going to Cornell Powell, who Cornell Powell has just come alive. Mm -hmm. The kid is just playing out of his mind right now. Go deep to him. I mean, you got a kid, a quarterback who can throw it from the 20 to the other 20. (laughs) I don't know if you saw that. It was the most incredible pass I've ever seen since Deshaun threw one against App State in 2015. It was incredible. Let him do it. Let the kid go to work. You've got to seize the opportunity, especially with the talent that you have at quarterback. They did not, and that's why you ultimately lost the game. So there's a lot of bodies. I'm seeing some updates now. As you know, the Tiger calls happen about 8 o'clock right before mm-hmm. our show. 
A lot of bodies out there. We've got, uh, here's some words from Dabo Sweeney. We're going to see where they are tonight and go from there. The worst one was probably Frank Ladson, who had a couple of bad breaks. He hurt his foot. He'll probably be out a couple of weeks. That's probably the worst injury we had. However, true freshman defensive lineman Brian Brissy escaped serious injury. We got good news on Brissy. There's no ligament damage. He just got hit on his knee. A uh, bunch of people. It's, cra- it's crazy. Crazy thing. A couple of guys had some concussions that we know of. Hopefully they can nurse those. Um, Sweeney also said that he plans, the plan is to get Tyler Davis with an ankle injury, Mike Jones with a hamstring injury back for Florida State. In other news, he said Trevor Lawrence is a full go. And also I'm seeing from Mr. David Hood, word on Skalski. Skalski has had surgery, will probably be out until later December. Mm -hmm. So still very banged up, but again, praise the Lord for a good recovery for, or a good, good outlook for Brian Brzee. No information on Bockhorst, but I see on Twitter, some people saying that they think it's a sprain as well. Looks like Clemson insider Will Vandervoort posted, looks like it's a sprain, possibly some issues with a kneecap. Maybe something that he'll miss a couple of games. I'm telling you what, guys. This team cannot make the national championship as beat up as they are. They're going to have to get healthy. They're going to have to get healthy and continue to win games with people out. And so that means that guys are going to have to step up. That means that games might be closer than they really should be. But it all kind of, you know, it goes back to, yes, I'm frustrated that Clemson can't seem to run the ball. We're getting in chat every single week. Clemson can't run the ball. We actually already knew, we've been seeing this for three or four weeks, that the offensive line is basically a pass-blocking offensive line at an elite level, but not a run-blocking offensive line. I mean, not even an average run-blocking offensive line. Travis Etienne is being done a disservice because of this offensive line. And we get people in there saying, well, ETN costs the game. Yes, ETN and DJ are not on the same page. Yes, they fumbled. But did you notice that that guy was almost in his face when that ball was, I mean, how many times do you have a ball snapped immediately and the guy's right there to take it right out of your hands? Not very many, but with this offensive line, this is what happens. And it goes back to what Houston was saying. When you understand as an offensive coordinator, this is the offensive line that you have, you're going to have to do something different. You can't keep running up the middle. Allen, there were times last uh, Saturday night that they were running up the middle and it was like Notre Dame brought the house because they knew it was coming. And that's when you get frustrated as a fan because you're like, you know you're not successful in the A-gap. You know that you're going to, for whatever reason, they're going to keep doing it. And even the other team knows they're blitzing free safety, strong safeties, middle line, but they're blitzing everybody in that same gap because they know it's coming. It's frustrating. It didn't put Travis Etienne in a situation to be successful. And it shows on the stat sheet. He he only had, what, 28 yards rushing, I believe. It's a, that's a terrible, I, I can't, I don't even want to say that. For the ACC all-time leading rusher, just left that game with 28 points. They're... Guys, there has to be something done with this offensive line rush block, uh, run blocking. I mean, that do it for Travis Etienne, guys. Do it for Travis because <laughs> that's not fair. It's not fair for him to have to sit there. And it's, and it's hard on the team as a whole. But thankfully, and I saw some people knocking DJ for not winning the game. Like Houston <laughs> said, I don't know what what how long you've been a Clemson fan, but DJ – just broke Deshaun's record for passing the ball. So let's walk that back a little bit. DJ, yeah, way back. DJ, DJ held He's that stunned. team up, and he did awesome. And guess what else DJ didn't do? He didn't throw any interceptions and cause – he didn't lose the game, okay? Yeah. Maybe he could, didn't have enough to win the game. But to be honest with you, why should DJ and Travis, even with all that being said, Clemson's been won national championship game with not the best run game with not the best run game. What is going on with the defense? Well, we go back to it. You can't really beat up the defense too bad either because they have so many players out. It's hard. This is a patchwork defense. And that's why I go back. The main thing is it's not the players. To me, and I'm not even going to say it's the coaching. I know it's so easy to say it's the coaching. I know you guys maybe don't agree with me. But in the situation that Clemson's in right now, 
the most pressing thing is not throwing the playbook away. It's not figuring out the run game. It's getting healthy. That's number one for me. Yeah. Oh, I, I agree. Number one is getting healthy for sure. I think what's frustrating and why we're why we're so down on the coaches. And look, a lot of people want to talk about armchair quarterbacks. You know, it's easy to say in hindsight, look, I've been telling you, Tony Elliott is getting us behind the eight ball running, the, uh, you know, up the middle and first down all year long. And that played out. OK, look, the fact of the matter is, you know, yeah, there's times where we used to get on him for not using ETN enough. OK, North Carolina last year was a great example of that. Well, we can do that. You have to read the room. OK, and in this in this room on this night, the run was getting stuffed because they were selling out to stop the run on first down every single series. And we continue to do it. OK, that doesn't make any sense. I mean, goodness gracious, I, I had hoped uh, that one that one play. OK, when we got the ball there at the end, I was like, look, all we need is a first down and this game is over. OK, and the whole world knows Tony Elliott is going to take this ball and run it up the middle, whether it's Dabo's call, whether it's his call. We know that's going to be the play. If they just do play action to Travis Etienne, Davis Allen or Braden Galloway is going to be wide open over the middle. That's all it's going to take. And I just I, I held deep hope way down in my heart that it was going to happen. And it didn't. It was basically run, 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 punt. Uh, it, it was again, that was a, it was a terrible, terrible decision to not go for the first, first down there. Unbelievably bad decision. And the fact that, look, we always want to lean on our defense there. OK, that is a that is a thing we've always done at Clemson. We always do that. We go into prevent offense at the end of the game. We kick and we put it on our defense. And that's great when your defense has all their players. We don't right now. We don't even have anywhere close to all our players. Not at the beginning of this game. And we have even less at the end of this game. Okay, the fact of the matter is we didn't have the horses to make the stops that we always make. Okay, and that's where you had to change your strategy right here. They didn't do it. It's disappointing. Look, the fact of the matter is they are going to fix it. Okay, we are going to get healthy, and I think they're going to hammer Notre Dame in the ACC championship, assuming we get healthy, and we're going to be back in the playoffs, and we can try to whine about something then because uh, we're going to be rooting hard for our Clemson Tigers, as we always do. We want the, what's best for them. It's just frustrating to see things like this happen over and over again. And look, I give Tony Elliott a lot of trouble on this show, okay, at times. He knows more about football than I probably ever will. That's what makes it frustrating when anybody, even a casual football fan, can see the run up the middle on first down is not working, and we did it all game. Yeah, I noticed we got to the point where we were even saying that. I mean, Alan, you were saying it out loud. Another run, another run. Marty was saying, I bet you they're going to run yeah. on first down. I bet you they're going to yeah. run on first down. I bet you they're going to run on first down. Sure enough, they ran on first down. That does, and that goes to tendencies. That goes to uh, consistently doing something over and over and over. You can't beat it up because if it's not working, you got to go away from it. Kind of like what Houston was saying. Hey, a, a sideline pass behind the line of scrimmage is basically like what Clemson ha is normally used to doing. We're, you know, why don't, why don't just do that in some cases, right? And then it was frustrating on the defensive line. Javon McKinley, not, not uh, Kyron Williams, excuse me, Kyron mm -hmm. Williams, 140 yards rushing, just tore it up, right? But the, the part where he did so well, I mean, was there one missed block from that guy? He picked up every single blitzing linebacker that Blitz Venables sent to him. And we know Brent's game plan is to fluster the quarterback and play man coverage and lean on the fact that you have better athletes. Brent Venables, that's his game plan, is to agitate you with the blitz and press you on the outsides. But when you have a running back, that literally picks up every single blitzing linebacker that comes at him. I mean, he had two at one time, and it was like he had a split-second decision. Which one will you go for? And go figure, the one he went for was the one that was going to be unblocked because the other guy that he didn't go for ran into the back of Brian Bercy. And I'm like, this is going to be the night that no one can get to Ian Book. And when Ian Book has time... He is very successful. 310 yards passing, uh, 7.9 yards per, per pass, one touchdown. He also ran the ball well, 68 yards for four and a half yards per carry. So very frustrating that Clemson defense, but also very frustrating from a Clemson fan point of view because it's, it's like hats off to Notre Dame. Yeah, hats off to Notre Dame. You're playing with a bunch of like <laughs> crucial players out. We're not talking about like, yep guys out we're talking about crucial players and they're going to continue to be out so so it's a concern for sure 
Yeah, no, I, I agree. And look, I, I want to say this, uh, Houston. I'll let you get in here in just a second. Is yeah, you know, I've given I've given Elliot a hard time tonight. Uh, you know, a little bit of hard time over the past few weeks. Look, what I want to say about Elliot, and, and the problem is there is a but to this. He actually really showed me some creativity against Notre Dame. I actually really thought that two thirds of his game plan, or you know, half of his game plan, was actually really good. I, I like how they set up the pop pass. Uh, kind of like they did at Ohio State. Uh, we got Davis Allen on a seam up the middle. That was beautiful. Used the middle of the field uh, with with Powell and Rodgers. And I know Rodgers fumbled one, but it is what it is. That You know, they tried to get E.T. the ball in several different ways, and that's great. That's great, okay? But the problem is first down was horrible all night long, and that's a third of your plays, okay? And it's it's not that it's not that it's, you know, that it's just not working. Oh, we missed a block. It's just – Goodness gracious, it was a bad play call, and they knew what was coming the whole time, and you didn't adjust to it. I think that was kind of the frustrating thing. It's You always want to run to set up the pass. In this game, it was pretty obvious we should have been passing to try to set up the run because DJ was putting it on the money all night. DJ was incredible in that game. So I, I really did, uh, honestly, I did like what I saw from Elliott in several of those situations there. Uh, second and third down, I mean, he was, he was doing great, and DJ was getting in the ball, and we were getting first. But I just hate being behind the eight ball after first down. Every, well, every down. First down, like you said, is uh, a majority of the plays you've got to play first down. I mean, guess what? I believe 100% of the plays you have to play first down. It's kind of like time. putting in golf. You have to do it before the <laughs> hole's over. And when you yeah. can't do it successfully, it's not like we're saying it's uh, they're not good on third down, not good on fourth down. They're not good on first down. That puts you behind immediately, and you have to change up how you're doing things. And it is it is something that – Maybe it's because the offensive line has a difficulty even getting anything going. So it's kind of hard when you can't do a traditional run. What do you do? You have to kind of go outside your playbook and uh, go outside of tradition. And that makes it makes it a little bit a little bit more predictable because, you know, the defense is not necessarily as worried about, you know, sending so many people against the run because they know they've been handling it. But let's give hats off. A lot of people saying, I don't want people to finish this show or finish this segment saying, man, all they did was gripe. All they did was gripe. Well, you know, we can gripe. We like it. It's easy to gripe. But I did give hats off to Kyron Williams. Great job picking up the block. Great job running the ball. Man, masterful. Ian Book, wow, congratulations. You are one of the reasons why Notre Dame finally has a win against a what a, a number one team. They they Brian Kelly has never had a, a top five win, I believe, uh, or or maybe even a ranked win, I want to say. Brian Kelly has notoriously been bad against ranked teams. But Ian Book, Kyron Williams definitely did it. And, man, that defense as well locked up Clemson. Jeremiah Owasu Koromoa, I guess I said it right. I'm not really sure. Uwusu Kormoa, man, nine total tackles, a half a sack and two and a half sacks for, or tackles for loss, just all over the field, did did great for sure. So props to the Notre Dame side. Let's give some props to Clemson side. Offensive, defensive player of the game. Alan, I'll start with you. Offensive player of the game for me, got to go with Cornell Powell. Six receptions, 161 yards, one touchdown, had a 53-yard t- uh, uh, catch as well. Huge, huge man. I think Houston was talking about it. just – just a just a great pass and catch there from DJ to Cornell, who they seem to be like, man, they seem to be like college roommates right now. And I know that graduates aren't staying with freshmen. <laughs> yeah, they're vibing for sure. I think we need to all give it like a virtual hug to Cornell Powell because this is the Cornell Powell we've wanted to see for years. He is killing it right now. He is stepping up in a big way in the absence of Ross, in the absence of Ladson, in the absence of Ngata. He has become the man. I mean, him and Rogers are both grown men right now out there, and it's fantastic to see. I, I had Cornell Powell as well. I'm going to give it to DJ, uh, DJ Uyangalele. Um, look, you, yeah. he's had arguably the greatest start to any freshman's career, mm-hmm. and we're talking about the likes of Deshaun and Trevor Lawrence. Um, the kid is on fire and he's got the best deep ball I've ever seen that that's counting Deshaun and Trevor. I was there for Deshaun Watson's, uh, first touchdown pass in Athens. I thought it was the best ball I've ever seen until (laughs) Saturday night when DJ threw it from the 20 to another 20 right in the bread basket of Cornell Powell. I I had to pick my jaw up off the floor. Kid can sling it. Needs to maybe take a little mustard off of it sometimes on the shorter passes because he's breaking kids' fingers. But dadgummit, he can play, and I'm going to give him the player of the game. 
Yeah, breaking kids' fingers is for sure. Um, I, I, I even, I don't know who exactly it was. I think it might've been Travis, but it's, it's basically like, you're going to get hurt. Your hands are hurting. And I think even Cornell Powell stubbed his finger there on one of those catches as well during the game. But, um, Clemson defense really hard for me, hard for me, 47 (laughs) points put up on the board, very hard. You know, when it's hard for me, I got to lean on the guy that, that I think felt like was, was doing well. Um, and, and, and I'm going with, with Darion Kendrick. I felt like he had good coverage majority of the time against, uh, the guy that he was matched up against. Uh, and it was very difficult. I know it's very hard. And I wanted to say this because Alan, you know, likes to pick on cornerbacks, not turning their head around, things like that. But it is very <laughs> hard when you've got the guy not, Hey, who, who said Ben Skarinek was going to have a game. Well, he ended up, you know, kept making some pretty decent catches there. But Michael Mayer, uh, or Meyer, went out there and did well too. I saw his name a ton, but Javon McKinley did as well too. But I, I got to give it to either him or uh, also Balen Specter, man, leading the total tackles. Those two guys I felt like, you know, were out there. You know, I don't know why Sheridan Jones was ahead of Andrew Booth, but, you know, I felt like maybe Andrew Booth should be out there a little bit more. But those are my thoughts on defense. It's still kind of hard though. Yeah, the good news is, uh, you know, I didn't have any problem with the defensive backs and getting their heads around in that game. Uh, I mean, they were actually in, in pretty good position all game. Ian Book was flat out putting it on the money, and they were making some tough catches. It was just it was just kind of a perfect storm. They played great. You got to tip your cap to Notre Dame and kind of move on there. Uh, yeah, when you're looking over the defense, there's just not a lot that stands out, to be honest with you. I thought the I thought the DBs actually pay, or the, the cornerbacks actually played pretty well for the most part. Uh, I thought Brian Brzee was pretty disruptive. Again, it's just really difficult because he's getting double teamed all the time. Uh, I actually went a little bit different on this particular one. I went KJ Henry. Um, he had a sack tackle for loss. You know, Henry is has not quite been what I was hoping he was going to be this year. You know, after he took his redshirt year, got bigger, got stronger. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping he's going to break out. I still think he will break out eventually. I just don't know that it's going to be this season. He's been solid this year, looking for more, but this was a, a decent game from him. Yeah, I'm going to go with uh, Bill Inspector uh, leading the tack, uh, teams in tackles and then also had the one fumble recovery in the end zone, which was crucial at the time. Um, so I think Spectre probably played the most complete game on the defense. I'll give him the player of the game. All right, so offensive and defensive grades, and then we'll get to our picks against the spread. We're going to have to do this one really fast, my friends. But offensive grade, um, again, so hard. So, so hard. I'm going to give them a C. I feel like if you just say DJ, 40 points. Uh, DJ was amazing. Tell me DJ, I'll give him an A+. Tell me Travis, tell me that run blocking. Tell me some of the plays that were called. I'm giving it a low C at most. So at best, I'm giving a B minus on this one. 40 points is still 40 points. You would think, you would hope a Brent Venables team would win the game or help you win the game scoring 40 points. So I really don't necessarily want to put ton on the offense, but it just didn't seem like that this Clemson team, you know, it, it just seems like this Clemson team's almost too one-dimensional now. And they had the least amount of, of injuries on their side. So, you know, that that's my worry. Yeah, look, I, I actually gave them – I was a little bit lenient on this one. I gave them a B-minus, and I'll tell you why. The fact of the matter is – man, I, I got to be honest. I've said the fact of the matter probably like 800 times tonight. Stop I apologize it. Just for that stop when it. you're editing that. But the fact of the matter is that, <laughs> that they, they scored – I'm going to say 33 points. They didn't score 40 points. I'm not counting overtime, okay? They scored 33 points on a really good defense, okay? And DJ Uyangalale was able to throw the ball wherever he wanted, okay, which is, again – why they should have done it more. Okay, look, yeah, you gotta have you gotta have better running than that. Goodness gracious. The line's gotta figure something out. But if you realize you can't do it, stop. <laughs> do something else. Do something differently. And when they threw it, they gained yards. Powell, huge day. Rogers, huge day. Okay. Uh, I mean, it was just uh, DJ was a- able to do whatever he wanted, whenever he wanted. Uh, you know, I love Davis Allen getting open. Braden Galloway got open again. Uh, you know, and I, I like the, like I said, I like the creativity I saw from Elliott in the past game, uh, for sure. I didn't think he, uh, I didn't think he did a bad job there at all. Uh, very, very nice to see. I think he, he kind of opened up the playbook, playbook a little bit and kind of give future teams something to look at for sure. But overall, got to give him a B minus the run game brought him down a little bit, but the passing game was great. I'll break this up into passing versus running, passing a plus plus, uh, run game D minus. Uh, play calling a a plus plus for the pass 
um, for run game F. Yeah. It's almost like you turned in, they turned in a, a college paper and, and only turned in half the work and you can't really give them a, I, I can't give them a B in that. I'm a very lenient grader, but if you turn in half the work, which means you had a pass game and no run game, I'm watching, t- I'm looking at this stat sheet guys and I almost want to cry. 1.6 yards per carry, Travis Etienne. 1.6. And then you've got you've got a stat sheet for the receiving. Powell, 161. Rogers, 134. Etienne, 50, 57. Galloway, 46. It's like, this is so lopsided there. 34 rushing yards to 439 passing yards. That is really unacceptable on the offensive side of the ball, for sure. On defensive side of the ball, I felt like they turned in an entire paper, but it was a finan- <laughs> it was a finance test. It was a finance test, and they didn't bring their calculator because their calculator was broken. Okay, that's that's what happened. The defense probably could have done a lot better. The defense probably could have got an A on this one, maybe even a B. But forty-seven points, you can't get a B for me on that one. Double overtime loser, and they just walked in twice on you in overtime. Can't give me, can't give me, especially a defense that's normally really good in the red zone. Can't give you a B on that one either. I got to give you a C on this one. Not good, but it was because it was a calculate. It was a TA eighty three II, and you yours was broken. <laughs> uh, yeah. Again, this is kind of this is kind of uh, interesting because we we sw- switch roles because now I'm going to be the tougher grader. I gave him a D on this. Okay, look, the only reason they didn't get an F is because of injuries. And you had to take that into account, I do think. But for the defense that was on the field, okay, for the most part, I'm giving them a D. Look, they uh, they had a bad night. De- Venable's defense did not have a good night. Linebacker was a major issue uh, that night. Could not make plays in space. Um, gave up several third and longs, you know, blitzing. They got zero pressure the whole night. They had it all day to do whatever they wanted. Just a tough night uh, for the defense. Give them a D. Look, they'll get healthy. They'll be back to an A. Don't worry about it. Shake it off, Tiger fans. We'll be back. Uh, I'm going to be the harshest of graders and give a D minus. Stop running a three man front. Then I might consider giving you a better grade. But until then, you're going to keep getting picked off uh, and keep giving up third and 14s in space to tight ends who you should be able to tackle seven yards short of that. So mm-hmm. D minus on that one. Ouch, ouch. So overall, let's see what we have in chat. Alan, if you got anything over on Facebook, I really appreciate it. Again, thank you so much. we got uh, about 26 watching on YouTube. The way that you can help us out on YouTube is make sure you like and make sure you comment or let us know where you're at, where, what you're like, uh, what kind of, if you're a Clemson fan or not. And then also make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bar. We really appreciate that. I actually have like a subscribe a notification reminder here. Uh, let's <laughs> see if I can play it. There we go. Look at that. Like subscribe, hit the notification. Now, I'm not ignoring you over on Facebook as well. Make sure you like the, the video and, and share it and follow us as well. We got a ton of people over on Facebook. We like to check in a ton over there. And then we also have southlandclub.com, which is our website that we like to write articles for as well. But that is the end of our Clemson Notre Dame chat. We could go on all night about this, fellas. I think yep. there's still more to talk about. But let me ask you this before I go any further. Surprise player of the game uh, is there any, I mean, I, I would have to say Cornell Powell hands down. I mean, just really showed out surprise, surprise word of the game. Cornell Powell after a touchdown with a hot oh, mic. Let's just put that. <laughs> love it. Love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Mike Tirico having to apologize to America. Well, we're all adults here. There might just be a little bit of adult language here. <laughs> you got to remember he's been at Clemson for five years and this is the best game he's ever had. So he's allowed to say whatever he wants <laughs> while he yeah. has a while he has the football crossing the, the end zone. <laughs> he's allowed to say whatever he wants. Um, but yes, this this is a family show and we don't say those words here. But you know what? I mean, when it's in the moment, I can't say that I haven't said some some uh, some things in the past. But 